Earl, and I play the role of Brit in the production Black Light Shining in the Darkness. For those of you who don't know what a black light is, it's that purple light that you can shine that reveals things that you can't see with the naked eye. And that's what we are. Okay, we're gonna begin with starting with the first family of the Black Lights production. Uh, we're, they're gonna start by introducing themselves and the roles that they're playing. Hi, my name is Rochelle Johnson, and I play the mother, Andrea. Hello everybody, my name is Matthew Newsom, and I play the lead of Daryl. Hi everyone, my name is Barrett Lewis, and I play Daryl's dad, James. Stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. This is just a portion of our cast, okay? So if you wanna know more about our cast members, please come back and tune in next week. But for now, I would like to ask, how long have you guys been a part of the Black Lights team? I actually been here since January of 2021. No, <laughs> <laughs> that was right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, myself, uh, I've also been here since January of this year. And uh, it's been a challenge getting the right cast in. And I, I love where we're going now. We've gotten some components that really have come in and helped this play to take off and take shape and, and take life, so. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. I know this play is going to be dynamic. It's going to speak volume into someone's life. I believe people will be chained, changed once they see the play. So I think uh, sometime things happen to discourage us so we can say, you know what? No, we're not gonna be in it. But we are here for the duration until this play, it's already been birthed. Now we're going to, you know, watch it push through and change someone's life. I, unlike my fellow castmates, am fairly new. I started, I guess, between August and September. And being a part of it has been very exciting and enjoyable as we get to sort of use our talents and abilities to continue to push forward a message that encourages a lot of our youth to get involved and be involved and let them know that we see and hear what they're going through. We always want them to know that they're welcome. Alongside uh, Rochelle and Barrett, I've also been here since January. And as we've all said, this is something that is momentous. It is needed, it's necessary um, to, it's been a struggle, like Barrett said, because to be a black light is it's not a game. You have to really put your, your best foot forward. You have to walk it out. You have to um, sometimes deny yourself certain things um, just so that you can be an example of what um, walking out with God looks like and, and being a black light, being that person that reveals um, all of the dirt and grime that we just go along with on a daily basis. So, yeah. One of the things that I love about this play is that there's different levels of acting experience here. Um, unlike myself, I'm, a, I'm fairly new to the game, but you know, uh, my other fellow members, I've learned a lot from them, and I'd love to know about each of your individual acting journeys. Well, um Professionally, I started uh, 2017, uh, but I've always loved being on the stage uh, since high school. Um, it's just something that I've been drawn to, but uh, professionally started out in 2017 and have done majority Christian plays because I find myself as a Christian wanting to promote my brand of Christianity and mm. just reaching out and empowering people through Christ to make a difference in their world and in their community. Uh, it's not always easy, uh, as we've mentioned, but uh, it is always, always worth it, especially when you see lives being changed, yes. families being changed, yes. uh, the community at large being changed. So um, even though it's only been a four year professional journey, uh, God has definitely taken me on a great growth path. So mm -hmm. I look forward to much more. Yes, wonderful. <sighs> <laughs> it's my turn. Well, actually, I knew from a child that I was going to be a star, but not a star for myself, a star for Jesus Christ. Um, I have the passion to um, just wanting to tell stories about the Bible, about God, about how lives can be changed. As being a writer myself, and I 
have my own production company. I have done plays since I was 13. I wrote my first play, Sunday School, Sunday School, Yuck, coming from Elgin, Illinois to Chicago. Got a standing ovation and I knew then that this is what God had for me because it's a ministry. It's not just something, I want to be a star. No, it's something, the passion I have down on the inside that God wants me to shine for him. It's not about me, but it's about, you know, my relationship with Christ and what he downloads to me to give to others. Amen. So I've been acting since I was a kid. I've been acting as a, kid, as a kid, but more so I'm just a constant character out, off the stage. I'm a kind of person that's very energetic and active and exciting. So having people tell me, like, you know, have you considered acting was something I never thought of, but I was always open to being used by God. So when this yes. opportunity came along, it was it was a great opportunity and position to really do that and ultimately make sure that I'm giving God the glory with all that oh, I'm doing. I love that's it. That's my bed. son. <laughs> my mama. Oh, it's yeah, fantastic that he says that, actually, because, like I said, I'm barely new to acting, but I've had experience in high school and things like that. But when I got into mm -hmm. the real world of acting, outside of the confines of your high school, you realize there's a lot of mm -hmm. other variables that play into the entertainment industry and I didn't want to be a part of that but being here has reminded me that there is a safe space yes. to let God use you as an actress or as an actor uh, whether that be behind stage or in front of the camera this is this is a safe space to just be able to let God use you as, as my fellow castmates say so it's great Okay, so please tell us how you feel your roles fit into today's society and how you feel like your role will help someone else in their struggle. Well, um, for me, uh, you know, dealing with knuckleheads like this and, you know, all I hear that don't want to listen. Uh, no, I'm joking, it's great, <laughs> but you know, um, being a dad, recognizing that you have to not just be there, be present, because my role, without giving too much away, you don't want to be a damager. Oh. You know, we talk so much about men being present in the household, but we don't talk about when they're present and they're abusive, mm -hmm. uh, the damage that it can do and the lasting effects it can have for generations. So um, I definitely want people to walk away from this, recognizing where they stand as far as men being in the home and building loving relationships with their families. You know, it's not enough just to be there. You have to be there in love with the love of Christ. Amen. So. Amen. Wow, it's funny you should say that because as a mother, you know, sometimes we don't always get it right. But when you let God lead you and guide you, to help you direct your children in the correct path. And I find myself, even with my own children, that I always let the boys get away. Mm -hmm. Just like, son, I let you get away. So I can say truly to the mothers that we also have to stay on top of our sons. We have to make them, you know, gentlemen, men. We have to deposit some good things and our son, so that when they get married, their wife won't be crying and saying, man, this is his mama, he a mama's boy. We need to make sure that we cultivate our sons and direct them in the right path, which is the Lord's way. I think what happens is mothers wants to be best friends with their children. We stop being parents. Um, for me, I'm not my children's best friend. I love them. We have a good relationship but I am a real parent. And when real parents, we have to set that guidelines for our children because the world don't care, the world will suck them up. And so I'm just saying for my character, um, she's kind of lost her way from going to church. She believes in God, she's a strong woman of God, but it's not that relationship. She might have religion, but not relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going wrong. We need to get back 
with our relationship with God and everything will be fine. I've been a son now for about, you know, like, you know, 25, 25 years, I think, yeah. <laughs> but for my role, Daryl observes what's going on with his family. Seeing how his mother is now having this new relationship with whoever this dude is. Oh, no, don't act like you don't know who I am. I pay the bills around here, boy. Oh, you pay for some beer bottles. Oh. Don't you gonna, talk to your father that way. Oh, yes, we can have some furniture moving. <laughs> uh -oh, so let me get my popcorn. Hold on. <laughs> but in that same regard, you see the, the sort of strife between him and his, and his stepfather as, his, as another man's in the house. And as you see your mother, who has a belief in God, sort of go through so much heartache and pain, you start to doubt what it's like to have somebody, or how, could you, how you could believe in a God like that, who could allow your mother to go through the pain of a relationship with that with your stepfather. And then as there's so many things around you that you try to figure out, get some kind of answer from, from your your friends to the guys who seem to have a little success to your relationships with your girlfriend, you're, you're sort of struggling and just looking for some kind of answer to the problems that you have going on. So I feel like this role allows for many young men who have been in this position, who have family members who don't seem to listen to them, someone mm. who seems like they care, but they don't really mm. care, and so many different influences around them to be like, hey, someone's going through what you're going through, they see it, and mm -hmm. if there's any place you can go, the church, the community of Christ, the body of Christ, is always there for you to hear you out, and God, despite what you may see, think, or feel, he is there to help you out and guide you through your life. And I can say, during the pandemic, I think a lot of people have lost hope but don't lose hope. Get your hope back because God is still on the throne and he is still the answer for the world today. Amen. Amen. Just to piggyback on what Matthew said, um, I I feel like Britt, the role that I play, is that person mm -hmm. that is inviting her peers and her um, family and anybody that will listen to this place, to this rec center that the play is surrounded around and she is that that black light. She is that person that um, wants to be relatable and just, you know, to draw people in, to, to uh, understand what people are going through, but to also let them know when they're wrong. Let them give them God, which is the answer to their problems. Um, yeah, so Britt is, I relate to her in my own personal way because that's, been my life is to be that light and to be that joy that God gives you. When people don't understand where it comes from. When people understand, oh, why are you so happy? Why are you? Why do you uh, love God so much? Why do you give praise to God? Because, like you said, He has always made a way. Mm -hmm. He has always been that, even through a, an abusive relationship, even mm -hmm. through going through uh, the the streets and the clubs, even if your parents. Um, are God you right down the right path, but you you not you you rebel and you not don't want to listen. So I really enjoyed myself and I thoroughly had a good time talking to you guys. And if you want to see the play, please if you want to support us as well, please go to jtscconnect.org. Okay, thank you guys for being here with me. I appreciate you, and um, we'll see y'all next time. See, don't have me sit next to him next time. <laughs>